Let's wrap up our week three with a quick discussion about vertex distance and compensation, compensated vertex power. We did in our lens computation packet the actual calculations for determining um, the amount of change uh, created um, by the movement in vertex. Um, we also um, learned um, how to compensate for that. So how much change needed to be made and then in which direction. Now, the more important uh, piece of this conversation actually um, is not the calculation of the amount, um, but what happens. So if we are talking about a patient who had an exam, so here's our uh, I, and uh, during the exam, uh, the phoropter sat um, at approximately 12 millimeters from the patient. This would be considered kind of the standard, what we call refracting vertex, or how far away um, from the patient the phoropter was, or how far away um, was the phoropter when they were refracted. However, that does not mean that when the patient picks up their new glasses, that the glasses sat in the same place as the phoropter. It could potentially be further away from the patient or potentially sit closer to the patient than the phoropter did during the exam. And we would call either of these the fitting vertex or where do the glasses fit on the patient. If you had a patient with maybe with a larger bridge um, and a maybe more narrow um, set of nose pads or a plastic frame with a more narrow bridge, the glasses may sit further away. Um, maybe they have really long eyelashes, so we've had to make an adjustment and pull those um, lenses further out from the patient. Um, maybe they've got a really flat bridge um, and they have chosen a plastic frame so the glasses sit uh, much closer to the patient. This difference in um, fitting uh, versus refracting vertex uh, does change the way that the patient sees the prescription. That difference um, really only comes into play uh, when our patient has a prescription that is kind of plus or minus like seven or higher. So if our patient was a minus three, a couple millimeters of difference in refracting versus fitting vertex really would not affect our patient a whole lot. Um, however, if they were a minus 12 or a plus 10, uh, we would uh, definitely start to see some differences in uh, the prescription uh, based on some movement in vertex. So there's really kind of two important things uh, to kind of hold on to here. Um, there's a kind of a rule of thumb, and the rule of thumb basically says that if our patient has a power of 10 and the glasses were to move, either in or out, right, reduce the vertex or increase it by five millimeters. So we could say, for example, the patient's glasses were fitting at 17, but they were refracted at 12. That would be our five millimeters of movement. And that movement would create a half of a diopter of change in the prescription. So a 10 diopter lens moved five millimeters changes the prescription by a half of a diopter. If ABO asks us a uh, refractive vertex question, it usually is this rule. So 10 diopters moved five millimeters changes by a half. Now the more important thing is to understand um, whether they're asking us what happened so how much did the prescription change or how do we fix it? 
how do we compensate for the fact that there was a change in the prescription? And understanding what happens when a pair of glasses is moved, when the vertex changes, is gonna help us determine um, what correction needs to be made or how we compensate for uh, the change that happens. So let's go through um, kind of the four movements. So if we are dealing with a plus lens and the glasses are fit further away from the patient than where they were refracted, the image through the lens um, actually increases in size, meaning that there is more power. I've always thought about this one kind of like a magnifying glass. If I hold a magnifying glass further away from myself, whatever I'm looking at, let's say I'm looking at an ant through my magnifying glass, the image of the ant is going to get bigger. That's because a, pl a plus lens pushed further away gets stronger. In turn, if I have a plus lens that is fit closer to the patient, so the glasses sit closer, that plus actually would get smaller. Uh, there is now less power that the patient is looking through. Now, this would help us answer a question if they said something along the lines of a 10 diopter lens is moved five millimeters closer, a plus 10 moved five millimeters closer. What power is the patient looking through? And in this particular case, based on what we just learned, there's less power. And we know that a plus 10 lens moved uh, five millimeters changes by a half we would be looking for an answer of plus 950 because that's how the patient perceives this particular lens because they're seeing less power based on the fact that the glasses are sitting closer, five millimeters closer. Now, if they asked us instead of kind of what happened with this movement, they wanted to know how do we fix it we would need to add that amount of change onto the original prescription. This is going to then in turn make the patient feel like they are looking through the 10 that they were originally prescribed. So if they asked us how do we fix or how do we compensate for this five millimeters closer fitting, we would be looking for an answer of plus 1050. So if they ask us, what happened or how the patient is perceiving the prescription, we would need to take that power away from the original prescription. If they ask us how we're going to fix it or what the compensation is, then we would need to add that half a diopter to our original plus 10 prescription. Now the rule doesn't change at all if we're talking about minus lenses, it just works backwards. So if we are talking about a minus lens and the glasses are fit further away from the patient than the refraction, this actually causes the prescription to get weaker, which means the patient would see a bigger image because minuses are minifying. So in this case, a minus lens moved further away gets weaker. So the patient, if we were talking about a minus 10, would feel like they are looking through a minus 950. If we have that same minus 10 patient looking through a pair of glasses now that is fit much closer, than how they were, were refracted, it would actually increase the power. So the sign would look smaller, clearer to this particular patient, um, but it increases the power of the lens. So they would actually feel like they were looking through a minus 1050. 
So this is what the patient would feel like or kind of what the effect of that movement was. However, if they have asked us then to compensate or to make up for the fact that this particular patient is um, feeling the effects of that weaker prescription because it's further away or the increased prescription because they were fit closer, then we need to compensate for that. So if we were doing that same question, but now they've asked us what is the compensation, if we were looking at that minus lens move further away, I would actually write a prescription of minus 1050. This would make up for the fact that it feels weaker and the patient would then feel like they're looking through the appropriate minus 10. If the patient